both dead in the front of the home. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Let's open with a word of prayer. Let's open with a word of prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, new day that you've uh, given us. And Lord, we want to thank you for your truth. It guides and leads us down this narrow path. Die uns führt und leitet durch diesen schmalen Weg. That keeps us from the devil's snares. Die uns von den ähm, Schlingen des Teufels bewahrt. And I want to pray that you'd help us to understand it. Und ich bete, dass du uns hilfst, das zu verstehen. And that as we go through these uh, themes. Und wenn wir jetzt durch diese Themen durchgehen. That we can make sure that we are all of one mind. Dass wir sicherstellen können, dass wir alle eines Sinnes sind. And that we can be sure that our feet are standing on a platform that cannot be moved. And that we are So please help us to be attentive. Bitte hilf uns, aufmerksam zu sein. Send your Holy Spirit. Send with deinen Heiligen Geist. And open our minds and hearts to receive these things. And öffne unseren Verstand und unser Herz, um diese Dinge zu erhalten. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this morning we're going to just do a review of uh, Daniel 8. Heute Morgen werden wir eine Wiederholung von Daniel 8 machen. Um, somebody asked us to go over this. Jemand hat gefragt, dass wir noch mal durchgehen können. So, it's important that we can all um, be able to understand these uh, different points. Das ist wichtig, dass wir alle in der Lage sind, diese verschiedenen Punkte zu verstehen. Okay. Um, the book of Daniel is the, the book that um, brings all the books of the Bible together. Das Buch Daniel bringt alle Bücher der Bibel zusammen. Okay, so um, okay, I, I will do these bits as well. Okay, so um, let's go to the notes. Okay, so let's begin by going to Daniel chapter 1. And we know that every chapter in the book of Daniel is uh, these things. They are to be rightly divided and, and brought together. Wir wissen, dass jedes Kapitel in Daniel richtig getrennt werden und zusammengebracht werden muss. Okay, so for instance, uh, in verse 17, Zum Beispiel in Vers 17, it says, As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, what experience is illustrated here? Welche Erfahrung wird hier dargestellt? Was? Okay. Yes, but it's where they have the new birth. Dort, wo sie die Neugeburt haben. This is the, the experience they take away the... It, when he took away the, the um, Babylonian food and gave them the clean food, it was taken away the filthy garment and given them this righteous one, right? So if it says here he has understanding in all visions and dreams, it means all visions and dreams, right? Wenn es hier sagt, dass er Verständnis in allen Visionen und Träumen hatte, dann meint es auch alle Visionen und Träume. So there's, all, there's, there's just this one experience that represents them all. Das ist einfach diese eine Erfahrung, was äh, alle von ihnen darstellt. R right? Okay, so when you go to uh, Matthew 13, verse 34. Wenn wir zu Matthäus 13, Vers 34 gehen. It says, All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable speak he not unto them. 
So we know that from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, Jesus speaks to us in parables, right? Wir wissen von Anfang der Bibel bis zum Ende der Bibel spricht Jesus zu uns in Gleichnissen. Okay, and it says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So the, the parables are secret, right? Die Gleichnisse sind Geheimnisse. Okay, so when you go to Daniel 2, wenn wir zu Daniel 2 gehen, verse 19, Vers 19, it's the same, it's just a parallel experience to the one that they had in Daniel chapter 1, right? Es macht dasselbe, einfach eine parallele Erfahrung zu dem, was sie in Daniel 1 hat. Right, it says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. So what was revealed to Daniel? Was wurde Daniel offenbart? Well, how many parables? Wie viele Gleichnisse? Right, all, all of them, right? Alle von ihnen. Okay. Because this is the secret, this is how the, the revealing of all visions and dreams. Weil das ist das Geheimnis, die Offenbarung von allen Visionen und Träumen. Okay, so when we go to Daniel 7 then, right? Wenn wir dann zu Daniel 7 gehen, in verse 1, Vers 1, it says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. This is... When you, when you understand line upon line, this illustration here is the same one that he has in Daniel chapter 1. Right? Wenn man Linie auf Linie versteht, dann ist das hier dieselbe Darstellung der Erfahrung wie auch in Daniel 1. It's the same secret that was revealed to him in Daniel 2. Es ist dasselbe Geheimnis, was ihm in Daniel 2 offenbart wurde. Right? Richtig. Or are we still in a chrono chronological mindset? Oder haben wir noch immer ein chronologisches Gedankengut? Okay, it seems that we just want to ignore me this morning. It doesn't matter. Go, go, to, go to Daniel 8. Gehen wir zu Daniel 8. In Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. So, what's the correlation between Daniel 8 and Daniel 7. Was ist der Zusammenhang zwischen Daniel 8 und Daniel 7? Es ist is the same vision, right? Es ist dieselbe Vision. Okay, so, the, um, when it says all visions and dreams in Daniel 1, it includes these ones, right? Wenn es sagt alle Visionen und Träume, dann schließt es das hier mit ein. It includes Daniel chapter 2, right? Schließt Daniel Kapitel 2 mit ein. Okay, so, um, so when we go to, uh, okay, so we're going to go to Daniel 8 now, we're going to run down through that and see how it correlates with all these other illustrations. Wir werden right? jetzt zu Daniel 8 gehen und um, diese Erzählung lesen und sehen, wie es mit all den anderen Darstellungen im Zusammenhang steht. Because it says if you don't understand one Parable, how will you understand? All parables, right? Wenn sagt, wenn ihr ein Gleichnis nicht versteht, wie werdet ihr dann alle Gleichnisse verstehen? Okay. Now, but just before we go on, the only point that I want to make is that Daniel 2, for instance, right? Den einzigen Punkt, den ich noch vorher machen will, zum Beispiel Daniel 2. In Daniel 2, he gets an illustration of, on this, on this big fractal here. In Daniel 2 erhält er diese Darstellung auf diesem großen Fraktal. Right. From the Sunday law all the way down to the second coming of Christ, right? Vom Sonntagsgesetz bis zu der Wiederkunft Christi. And the iron is obviously in the, the iron and clay. Und Eisen und Ton. Is in the um, seven last plagues. Right? In den sieben letzten Plagen. Okay, leading down to the second coming of Christ. Right? Es wird dann zu der Wiederkunft Christi. Okay, so but we understand that, that Daniel seven and eight, right, are is like a fra fractal of that, right? Ja, wir verstehen, dass Daniel sieben und acht ein Fraktal davon ist. Okay, so although it's the same illustration historically. 
we understand that uh, Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 is an illustration of the Sunday law itself. Right? Obwohl es eine andere Dar äh, dieselbe Darstellung historisch gesehen ist, ist äh, Daniel 7 und Daniel 8 eine Darstellung für das Sonntagsgesetz an sich. Okay, so we just take this illustration here and we bring it down underneath here. Right? Wir nehmen jetzt hier diese Darstellung und bringen das hier runter. Okay, so why, why is Daniel 7 and 8 the Sunday law? and not a parallel to Daniel 2. Warum ist Daniel 7 und 8 das Sonntagsgesetz und nicht eine Parallele zu Daniel 2? And you guys need to answer that question. Und ihr müsst diese Frage beantworten. Okay, that, that may be so, but that's not how we would prove. How do how do we prove that Daniel seven and eight is represent the Sunday law? I mean, uh, first, the kingdoms represent one kingdom basically. So you have Medo Persia and Babylon. This you have one after another. Y yes. But in Daniel seven and eight. It's Oh, oh, okay, yes, that, that, that's at least one point, right? Yeah, hat man, um, bei Daniel 2 hat man Babylon und Medo-Persien eins nach dem anderen, aber in Daniel 7 und 8 stellt das zu ein no, Königreich dar. Medo-Persia is not represented in time of peace in Daniel. Yes. Und um, Medo-Persien stellt in Daniel 7 auch nicht eine Zeit des Friedens dar. Okay, Daniel so the, the symbols can have... Uh, uh, different applications depend upon context. Right? Symbole können verschiedene Anwendungen abhängig vom Kontext haben. Okay, so we have to look at the context of what's been illustrated, and then you can clearly see that it, they're, they're not uh, Daniel seven and eight are not paralleling Daniel two. Right? Wir müssen uns diesen Kontext anschauen von dem, was dargestellt wird, und dann kann man klar sehen, dass Daniel sieben und acht keine Parallele zu Daniel zwei ist. Okay, let, let's just look at that. Go to, um, go to Daniel 8 and verse 2. Schauen wir uns das an. Gehen wir zu Daniel 8 und Vers 2. It says, And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass, when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Yulia. So the Bible has to interpret itself, right? Die Bibel muss sich selbst auslegen. So, when we go to Esther chapter 1, Wenn wir zu Esther 1 gehen, verse 1, Vers 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. Right, so what's the correlation here? Was ist hier der Zusammenhang? Shushan, right? Susan. And we know from our study of Esther that it, the Shushan palace is marking this beginning point of the Sunday law, right? Wir wissen von dem Studium von Esther markiert, uh, um, dass diese Geschichte dort in Susan der Anfang des Sonntagsgesetzes ist. Okay, so here's one point that we see uh, is in is in like a parallel, right? Da ist ein Punkt, wo wir sehen können, dass es eine Parallele ist. Okay, we know that that itself is not enough to put it at the same place because often these things are, can be marked at parallel places on smaller fractals, right? Wir wissen, dass dieser Punkt alleine nicht genug ist, um das äh, zu beweisen, weil oft ähm, können also diese Symbole ähm, parallel sein auf verschiedenen Fraktalen. Okay, but it, it's something we have to take note of. Right. Aber das ist etwas, was wir bemerken sollen. But we will see that it is at the same place. Right? Aber wir werden sehen, dass es am selben Platz ist. Okay, because when we go to verse 3, wenn wir zu Vers Daniel 3, 8 and verse 3, also zu Daniel 8, Vers 3 gehen, it says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So Daniel in Revelation is one book. Right. Daniel und Offenbarung ist ein Buch. Okay, so when we go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 13, 
Wenn wir zum Buch Offenbarung gehen, Offenbarung 13. Okay. We have the revelation of this two-horned power. Da right? haben wir eine Offenbarung von dieser zweihörnigen Macht. Right? Because the two-horned power you find in Daniel the same one you see in the book of Revelation, right? Weil die zweihörnige Macht, die wir in Daniel finden, dieselbe finden wir auch in Offenbarung 13 Vers 11. So, it says and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon, right? So, we understand, right, that you have this, um, this way he comes up, it's like a lamb. Wir verstehen, dass es hier ist, wenn er heraufkommt, wie ein lamb. But here he's going to speak like a dragon, right? Aber hier wird es wie ein Drache sprechen. Okay, so, um, and says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Right, so it's marking the healing of the deadly wound. Right? Jetzt die Heilung der tödlichen Wunde. Okay, so when the, the two-horned beast speaks like a dragon, it marks the Sunday law. Right? Das zweihörnige Tier, also wie ein Drache spricht, markiert es das Sonntagsgesetz. So we see in Daniel 8 that there's this two-horned beast by Shushan the palace. Right? Also Daniel 8 sehen wir dieses zweihörnige Tier, was bei Susan im Palast ist. Okay, and there's one horn is higher than the other, and the, it's the one that comes up last that's higher, right? Und ein Horn ist höher als das andere, und das ähm, etwas höher ist, das kommt zuletzt auf. Okay, so when this two-horn beast begins, Right, which horn is in control? Wenn dieses zweihörnige Tier anfängt, welches Horn ist dort in Kontrolle? Which horn is in control, Nelia? Welches Horn in ist 1798. dort in Kontrolle? In 1798. Church or state? Ähm, Kirche oder Staat? Okay, you need to know this, right? Wir müssen das wissen. Okay, which one is it? Welches ist es? Okay, the state power, right? Die Staatsmacht. Because it's a time of peace, Weil right? Es ist eine Zeit des Friedens. And right here, when the church power rules over the state power, it's a time of trouble, Whenever the woman rules over the, the, the civil power, the trouble begins, right? Okay, so this Second horn is this church horn that's now higher than the state horn, right? Das zweite Horn ist jetzt das Kirchenhorn und das ist jetzt höher als das Staatshorn. Okay, and go to Daniel 7 and verse 2. Gehen wir zu Daniel 7 und Vers 2. Daniel speak and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. What do we see? Was sehen wir? So what time, what time do we, is it? Die vier Winde. Welche right, Zeit it's the trouble, right? Das ist eine Zeit der okay, Daniel 7, Daniel 8 are parallel, right? Daniel 7 und Daniel 8 sind parallel. It says, and four great beasts came up from the sea. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, and I beheld the wings thereof were plucked, and it lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the sea as a man, and a man's heart was given to it, and behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Right? So you have this lion and this bear. Right? Also diesen Löwen und den Bären. Okay, and we know, oh, in fact, we can just turn here quickly, go to First uh, Samuel, um, chapter 17. Geht zu 1. Samuel 17. Okay, and this is about David and Goliath, right? Da geht es um David und Goliath. And Goliath is a symbol of this statue that's in Daniel chapter 2. Right? Goliath is a symbol for this standbild, which we in Daniel 2 find. Okay, verse uh, 34. Verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant, 
kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. So the Bible says that the lion and the bear is a him. It's a one item, right? The Bible says that the lion and the bear are a is or a him. So it's a one piece. Okay, so it wants us to take the the lion and the bear, right? I want to also that we take the lion and the bear. Okay, so here we have a lion and a bear. Yeah. And it wants to show us that they're one, right? Uns zeigen, dass sie eins sind. Okay, and hence, in Daniel 8, when it begins with Medo-Persia, these two horns, okay, you can know that these two horns are a parallel to the lion and the bear. Kann man sehen, dass diese zwei Hörner eine Parallele zum Löwen und dem Bären ist. Right, because they're both the same vision. Weil beides dieselbe Vision ist. Right. Okay. Yes, this is all, this is all um, a review, it's all um, stuff that we've gone through many times, right? Das ist alles eine Wiederholung, Sachen, die wir schon oft durchgegangen sind. This should be a, a breeze in the park for us to, to do this, right? Um, ja, das sollte... It's, a, it's an expression. Okay. Um, go now to Revelation 13, verse 1. Gehen wir zur Offenbarung 13, Vers 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. Where's this beast coming out of? Woher kommt dieses Tier? Out the sea. Aus dem Meer. Daniel and Revelation is one book. Daniel right? Offenbarung ist ein Buch. Where did we see the beast come out of the sea? Wo haben wir das Tier aus dem Meer kommen sehen? Sorry? Daniel 7, right? Daniel 7. Okay. So in, in Daniel 7, there's four beasts. Striving upon the sea, coming up out of the sea, right? In Daniel 7, da sind diese vier Tiere, die heraufkommen aus dem Meer. Okay, so it says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. So we see the same beast coming up out of the sea in Revelation 13 as we see coming up in Daniel chapter 7. Right? Wir sehen also dasselbe Tier, was in Offenbarung 13 aus dem Meer heraufkommt, wie in Daniel 7. Same four characters, right? Same four characters. We know that this one in Revelation 13 is an illustration of the 1260, right? Wir Dieses hier in Offenbarung 13 ist eine Darstellung der 1260. Okay, so you have this leopard and then you have the dragon, right? Man hat den Leoparden und dann hat man den Drachen. Okay, so we just bring things line upon line together. Wenn wir Linie auf Linie die Sachen zusammenbringen. Okay. Revelation is the revelation of the book of Daniel, right? Die Offenbarung ist die Offenbarung des Buches Daniel. Okay, so, um, then we, when we read Revelation 13, 2, we see that the dragon, which is paganism, is giving its power to the papacy, right? In Offenbarung 13, Vers 2 lesen, können wir sehen, dass der Drache, was das Heidentum ist, dem Papst um seine Macht gibt. So what's been taken away? Was wird, ist also weggenommen worden? The daily, das right? Das tägliche. So... Because the, the speaks like a dragon here, but the we just read that the dragon gave to the papacy his power seat and great authority, right? Es spricht hier wie ein Drache, aber wir haben gelesen, dass der Drache dem Papsttum Macht und seinen Sitz und große Vollmacht gab. So we know that it's 
It's not the removal of paganism, but paganism is covered in a Christian rule. Right? Wir wissen, dass das Heidentum nicht weggenommen ist, sondern mit einer christlichen Bedeckung bekleidet ist. Okay. So, go to Revelation 17 in verse 1. Gehen wir zu Offenbarung 17, Vers 1. It says, There came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. So this now brings us down to the end, right? The judgment. Das Vers 2, das bringt uns jetzt zum Ende, zum Gericht. Okay, it's the same. Let me just pull these things out here. Dasselbe ist auch hier. Same judgment here, right? Dasselbe Gericht ist auch hier. Okay, um, verse 3. It says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. What did the beast have? Was hat das Tier? Seven heads and ten horns. Right? Sieben Köpfe und zehn Hörner. Where did we just read that? Wo haben wir das gerade gelesen? Yeah, chapter 13. Kapitel 13. Okay, so because in verse... Revelation 13, verse 1, it says, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Right? 13, verse 1, it says, it has seven Köpfe and ten Hörner. Okay, so right here, you have, it speaks like a dragon. Here it speaks like a dragon. Right, and it's um, a daily, taken away. It's taken away. You've got the same... Four beasts, right? Lion. Leopard. Leopard. And dragon. And the dragon. Okay, John sees the judgment come upon this beast, right at the end. Hannes sieht, wie am Ende dieses Gericht über das Tier kommt. Okay. Um, so the beast that comes out of the, the sea there, right? Das Tier, was hier aus dem Meer kommt. So here it comes out of the sea. Hier kommt es aus dem Meer. The beast that comes out of the sea has seven heads and ten horns. Das right? Tier, was aus dem Meer kommt, hat sieben Köpfe und zehn Hörner. John seen the judgment on that beast with seven heads and ten horns at the end. Johannes sieht das Gericht über dieses Tier am Ende, über dieses Tier, das zehn Köpfe und zehn, äh, sieben Köpfe und zehn Hörner hat. Right, and when we go to Revelation 12, und wenn wir zu Offenbarung 12 gehen, Vers 3, Vers 3, it says, There appeared another wonder in heaven, behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. So, the beast that has seven heads and ten horns is the dragon, right? Das Tier, was sieben Köpfe und zehn Hörner hat, ist der Drache. Okay, John saw the woman sit upon that same beast in Revelation 17, right? Und Johannes hat diese Frau auf demselben Tier sitzen gesehen in Offenbarung 17. Okay, so this is what clarifies. This, this dragon comes up here, right? Das macht es für uns jetzt klar. Also hier kommt der Drache heraus. Marking the, where the deadly wound is healed. Das ist markiert, wenn die tödliche Wunde geheilt ist. So you now have this, the, the dragon is the civil powers. Die, der Drache ist die Staatsmacht. The woman sitting on there. Die Frau sitzt darauf. Okay, when he gets to the end, he sees the judgment on that beast for drinking her wine and having this unlawful association with her. Right? Und ähm, am Ende sieht er dann dieses Gericht über diese Frau, weil sie diese, äh, ihren Wein getrunken haben und mit ihr sich falsch verbündet haben. Okay, so. We know that this is this period from 538 to 
1798. Wir wissen, dass es diese Zeitspanne von 538 bis 1798. Okay, so. Um, go back to Daniel 8, right? Gehen wir zurück zu Daniel 8. So this is this two-horned power, right? Das ist diese zweihörnige Macht. And this two-horned power is this one that comes up at the beginning, at Shushan, right? Diese zweihörnige Macht kommt hier am Anfang bei Susan herauf. Excuse me. Okay, it says... Daniel 8 and verse 4. Daniel 8, verse 4. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beasts might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Okay, so when the ram comes up, what does he do? When the widow heraufkommt, what does he do? Three different directions, right? He stoops in three Okay, and it becomes great, right? So, when the beast rises up here, speaks like a dragon, he becomes great, right? Das Tier hier heraufkommt und wie ein Drache spricht, wird es groß. It represents pride. It represents him exalting himself, right? Das stellt den Stolz dar, dass er sich selbst überhebt. So when he becomes great and he's gone in these three different directions, it's marking a time of Wird, Trouble, right? Because the word pushing means to war against, right? Okay, so remember this, this point because it will be important as we go on. Right? Okay, so now go the next heading. Okay, in Daniel 8 and verse 5. It says, and as I was considering, behold, an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which had been, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran into him in the fury of his power. So there's this he goat, and he's now going to make war against this two-horned power. Right? Es gibt jetzt diesen Ziegenbock und er wird Krieg führen gegen die zweihörnige Macht. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. So the two horns represent church and state, right? Die zwei Hörner stellen Kirche und Staat. So this, here's a power that's now warring against this church and state power, right? It says in verse 21, in verse 21, it says the rough goat is the king of Grecia, right? And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So it represents a king warring against another kingdom, right? Okay, so Daniel 8 is the same illustration as we find in Daniel 11, right? And Daniel 11 is an, is an explanation of Daniel 8, right? Okay, so this is this point that Lawrence made at the beginning, right? So what's Daniel 11 an illustration of? Right, so it's a war between the north and the south, right? In the Bible, Satan wants to be worshipped, right? Right, and the worship, he's going to be worshipped through a Sunday law, right? And where does he sit when he gets worshipped? Right, 
It's on the sides of the north. Right? That's that's where he wants to be worshipped. And the throne on the side of the north. Right? Okay, is this southern beast also Satan? Is this südliche Tier auch Satan? Yes, right? Yeah. So the, it's the Daniel 11 is a war between the north and the south, right? Daniel 11 is a Krieg between the north and the south. So right here it can tell us that this great horn here which makes a war against this two-horned beast that made the Sunday law. Right? right? Is a war between the north and the south. Okay? Because this power comes against us and breaks these two horns. Right? Okay? So... What's the difference between north and south, Nick? Was ist der Unterschied zwischen Norden und Süden? Eine ist offene Rebellion, okay, which das one's andere which? verborgen. Okay, right. So what what does that mean? What's what's the What's the hidden rebellion? Also How is it hidden? Norden ist diese verborgene Rebellion und der Süden diese offene Rebellion und um, was bedeutet das, dass es verborgen ist? Oder wie ist es verborgen? Right, so the, the daily is open rebellion, right? Das ist unter einem christlichen Gewand, weil das tägliche ist die offene Rebellion. But here is hidden under a Christian gap, right? Hier wird es unter einem christlichen Gewand verborgen. Okay, they're, they're both the satanic power. One pretends to be religious and the other one is totally against religion, right? Beides ist diese satanische Macht und das eine ist diese ähm, off, äh, verborgene Rebellion und das andere ist vollständig gegen Religion. Okay, but it says this horn is the Greek horn, right? Das eine gibt vor christlich zu sein. Das eine gibt vor christlich zu sein, das andere ist vollständig gegen Religion. That this horn is a Greek horn, right? Und das ist, dieses Horn ist das griechische. Okay, so go to Acts 17. Gehen wir zur Apostelgeschichte 17. Und Vers, uh, 16. Vers 16. It says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met him. So where is he? Wo ist der? In Greece, right? In Athen, in Griechenland. Is in Athens, right? Ja, ist in Athen. Okay, Vers 18. Vers 18. It says, Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some uh, other some, he seemeth to be a set of forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Okay, so what did they, they what were these people? Was waren diese Leute? The philosophers, right? Waren Philosophen. What is philosophy? Was ist Philosophie? It's humanism, right? Es ist Humanismus. It's the exaltation of man, das right? Das ist die Erhebung des Menschen. And Humanism is, is atheism, right? It doesn't mean that they don't have a religion. It means they just don't accept that there is a supreme being that rules over them, right? It bedeutet nicht, dass sie keine Religion haben, sondern es bedeutet, sie haben einfach kein erhabeneres oder höchstes Wesen, was über sie herrscht. Okay, so. This Greek horn, right, is a humanistic horn or an atheistic horn, right? This Greek horn is this humanistic or atheistic horn. Okay, and that's what this sounds. That's what paganism is, right? And that is the heidentum. It's an exaltation of any other god apart from the true god. It's an erhöhung von jedem anderen Gott außer dem wahren Gott. It's man's ideas to find. Reasons to prove that the true God does not exist. Right? menschliche Ideen, um zu beweisen, dass der wahre Gott nicht existiert. Right? 
They promote LGBTQ, right? Sie um, fördern dieses LGBTQ. And what is the symbol for that movement? Und was ist das Symbol für diese Bewegung? The rainbow, right? Der Regenbogen. And where did they get that from? Woher haben sie das? From the Bible, Von right? Der Bibel. And it's just mocking the Lord, sie right? Sie verspotten einfach den Herrn. Okay. The Bible that condemns those things, they use that symbol to say, no, we were at an open rebellion against what you say, right? Die Bibel, die diese Sachen verdammt, um, die benutzen sie diese Symbole, um um, ja, zu zeigen, wir sind in offener Rebellion gegen die Dinge, die die Bibel sagt. Okay, they promote evolution, right? Sie um, befürworten Evolution. Which is all these human arguments to destroy the idea of a creator. Was right? all diese menschlichen Argumente sind, um diese Idee eines Schöpfers zu zerstören. Okay, it's all, it's all, it's this, this globalistic, humanistic ideas that man It, man can determine his own destiny, right? Sind diese globalistischen, humanistischen Ideen, ähm, die sagen, dass der Mensch sein eigenes Schicksal bestimmen kann. Whereas the, the North is a, is a religious idealistic view, but it's perverted, right? Hingegen der Norden eine religiöse, idealistische ähm, Theorie ist, aber das ist verdreht. So it claims to uphold the true God, But it's actually a, a, a greater deception than this open rebellion. Right? Es behauptet den wahren Gott anzubeten, aber es ist noch eine größere ähm, Verführung als hier dieses Wort. Okay, that's the north and the south, right? Das ist eben der Norden und der Süden. Okay, now come down to Daniel 8 and verse 8. Gehen wir zu Daniel 8 und Vers 8. It says, therefore the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So what happens to this horn now? Was geschieht jetzt mit diesem Horn? A, a judgment, right? Es wird gerichtet. Okay, so we just do it here, right? Können wir das hier hinschreiben? So you have the lion, the Löwe, the bear, the bear. Two horns. Diese zwei Hörner. Okay, let me get this. Okay. The leopard. And it's so. Time of war, right? Eine Zeit des Krieges. Yes. And this one right here, what happens to him? Was geschieht mit diesem hier? It's judged, right? Es wird gerichtet. Paralleling this judgment, right? Es parallel zu diesem Gericht. And what comes up? Was kommt herauf? Four little horns, right? Vier kleine Hörner. We know that those. Four horns represents worldwide, right? Wir wissen, dass diese vier kleinen Hörner weltweit darstellen. At the end of war, what does man make? Am Ende des Krieges, was macht der Mensch? Sorry? Ein Bündnis. Yeah, they, they, always, they always come together to make an organization to bring world peace, right? Sie kommen immer zusammen, um eine Organisation zu machen, um Weltfrieden herbeizubringen. Okay, like after the First World War, they made the League of Nations, after the Second World War, they made the United Nations, right? Zum Beispiel nach dem Ersten Weltkrieg haben sie den Völkerbund gemacht, nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg die Vereinten Nationen. So, they try to enforce peace in their, their own strength, right? Sie haben versucht, den Frieden in ihrer eigenen Kraft herbeizubringen. Okay, and the Lord just wants us to see these repeating patterns, right? Der Herr möchte uns einfach diese wiederholenden Muster zeigen. Okay, so now we have a time of peace, right? Jetzt haben wir eine Zeit des Friedens. Now, what began this um, war here in Daniel 8? Was hat hier um, angefangen bei dem Krieg in Daniel 8? What did the two-horned power do? Was hat das zweihörnige Tier getan? Sorry? Remember, okay, that, that's true, but 
it says it I said it became great and it went against three different areas, right? Sagt, es wurde groß und ging gegen drei Himmelsrichtungen. Okay, so um, go to verse Daniel 8 and verse 9. Geht zu Daniel 8 und Vers 9. It says, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, right? So, out of one of them, right here, comes forth a little horn. Who is that? Aus einem von ihnen kommt ein kleines Horn hervor. Wer ist das? Pagan Rome, right? Das heidnische Rom. How did Pagan Rome begin? Wie fing das heidnische Rom an? Small, peaceably, right? Klein und friedlich. So, comes out of these horns here, right? Es kommt hier aus den Hörnern hervor. Okay, it says, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, the east, and the pleasant land. So what do we see? Also, was sehen wir in Vers 9? Wiederholt sich und wird noch größer. Okay, so the point is that it comes up here. Where is it waxing great? Also es kommt hier herauf und wo wächst es groß? Right, just it's repeating this pattern, right? Am Anfang der Zeit der Trübsal, es wiederholt also dieses Muster. So, wax is great. Es wächst groß. And what else does it do? Was macht es noch? It goes to the south, toward the east, toward the pleasant land. Three areas, right? Zum Süden, zum Osten und zum verheißenen Land. Drei Himmelsrichtungen. Yes, so you can see Daniel 8 in verse 9 is just like Daniel 11 in verse 40. Man kann sehen, dass Daniel 8, Vers 9, genauso wie Daniel 11, Vers 40 ist. Just like Revelation 13, verse 3. Genauso wie Offenbarung 13, Vers 3. Just like Revelation 13, verse 11. Genauso wie Offenbarung 13, Vers 11. Yes? The all mark in the end of the time of trouble, uh, sorry, the, the end of the time, yeah, the end of the time of trouble, and then the beginning of the time of trouble. Again, Sie markieren right? alle das Ende der Zeit der Trübsal und den Anfang der Zeit der Trübsal. Okay, so, three areas. Drei Gebiete. Okay, so, and... This is Revelation 13, verse 11. Das ist auf Mark 13, Vers 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So, here the beast comes up out of the earth. Hier kommt das Tier aus der Erde. Right. And here he comes up out of the sea. Hier right? kommt es aus dem Meer. Sister White says the earth represents a time of peace. The sea represents a time of Right. So it comes out of the horns here, it comes up peaceably, but when he waxes his great goes towards the three areas, right? It's now marking the time of trouble. Right? Es kommt hier aus den Hörnern und steigt friedlich herauf, aber wenn es jetzt gegen diese drei Richtungen stößt, dann markiert es eine Zeit der Trübsal. Good. We know that pagan Rome typified the United States, right? Weil wir wissen, das heidnische Rom hat die USA vorausgeschaut. Okay, so we can see this, the same pattern on a smaller level, right? Wir können also dasselbe Muster auf einer kleineren Ebene sehen. Right? Because remember, Daniel 2 is illustrating uh, this all the way down, but Daniel 7 and 8 is a fractal of that showing the, the same pattern, but just in the Sunday level. Right? Man denkt daran, Daniel 2 zeigt dieses diese große Ebene, aber Daniel 7 und 8 ist ein Fraktal davon und zeigt dasselbe Muster einfach im Sonntagsgesetz. Okay, so go to Daniel 8 and verse 10. Geht zu Daniel 8 und Vers 10. Okay, it says, an it wax great, speaking about pagan Rom, right? Das wuchs groß, das spricht über das heidnische Rom. And what, Sister White, what symbol does she use for pagan Rom? Und Welches Symbol benutzt ein Wort für das heidnische Rom? The, the dragon, der right? Drachen. Okay, so here we have, and that's who was next on the list here, right? The dragon. Right? Das war der nächste hier oben, der Drachen. Okay, it says, um, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. 
Okay, who is the last kingdom to wage war against God's people? Was ist das letzte Königreich, was Krieg gegen Gottes Volk führen wird? The USA, right? The USA. And right here he speaks like a dragon, right? Hier spricht es wie ein Drache. And this is marking the point where the United States wages war against God's people. Und das right? markiert den Punkt, wenn die USA den Krieg gegen Gottes Volk führt. Parallel in this dragon here waging war, right? Parallel mit diesem Drachen hier, der Krieg führt. Right, it's, it's important, important that you see these parallels, right? Es ist wichtig, dass ihr diese Parallelen seht. Okay, because it says, um, it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Who's he stamping upon? Auf wen stampft er? Who, who is it, Maris? Wer sind die Sterne? Who is pagan Rome stamping on? Auf wen stampft das heidnische Rom? Sorry? Yeah, God's people, right? Das Volk. They are the, they are the stars that are, represents God's holy people, right? Sie sind die Sterne, die Gottes heilige Volk darstellen. Okay, and if we go to Daniel 7, same illustration, Wenn wir right? zu Daniel 7 gehen, das ist dieselbe Darstellung. Verse 7. Vers 7. It says, after this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast. This is pagan Rome, right? Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth and it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Who's he, what's he doing? Was macht er? Who? Wer stampft? Now what's the, what, the remnant, right? Den Überrest. Okay, the Lord always has a remnant, right? Der hat immer einen Überrest. So Daniel 7, Daniel 8, same vision, right? Daniel 7 und Daniel 8 ist dieselbe Vision. So you see this fourth beast, pagan Rome, stamping upon God's people, und right? Das vierte Tier, das heidnische Rom, sehen wie es auf Gottes Volk rumstampft. It says, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, right? Es hat jetzt zehn Hörner. So it has... Zehn Hörner. This beast here, how many horns? What's, what's the ten here? Diese, bei diesem Tier hier, was ist dort hier die zehn? The ten kings, zehn right? Könige. Okay, the ten kings make a covenant with a woman for one hour, right? Zehn Könige machen hier ein Bündnis mit der Frau für eine Stunde. Parallel, right? Das ist eine Parallel. Smaller fractal showing you the same thing, right? Das kleinere Fraktal zeigt dir dasselbe. And I go to Luke 21. Gehen wir zu Lukas 21. Vers 23. Vers 23. It says, But woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Which time period is this? Welche Zeitspanne ist das? Yes, the 1260. Okay, Matthew 24, what's this time period called? In Matthäus 24, wie wird diese Zeitspanne great genannt? Tribulation. Great Tribulation, right? Große Trübsal. And the Great Tribulation, Sister White says, is the 1260. Dein Weiz sagt, dass die Große Trübsal die 1260 ist. Okay, right, so we can put 1260 here, right? Also hier 1260 in the Right? Richtig. Paralleling. This above, das right? ist parallel mit dem da oben. Okay. Here, the daily is taken away, right? Hier wird das tägliche weggenommen. Speaks like a dragon, er right? Er spricht wie ein Drache. Okay, it's where the woman now sits upon the ten kings. Da right? sitzt die Frau auf den zehn Königen. Okay, so if this is the 1260, who's sitting on these ten kings? Wenn das die 1260 ist, wer sitzt auf den zehn Königen? The woman. Die Frau. And therefore, what must have happened? Deswegen, was muss geschehen sein? The daily was taken away, das right? Tägliche muss weggenommen okay, so we, we, need, we should see that. We'll see that in a moment, right? Wir sollten das gleich sehen. Okay. 
But let's go back to Luke 21. Gehen wir zurück zu Lukas 21. So this is time of great distress, right? Das ist diese Zeit der großen Drangsal. Verse 24. Vers 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. What's happening to Jerusalem? Was geschieht mit Jerusalem? They've been stamped upon, right? Sie werden im zertreten, zerstampft. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Same illustration, right? Selbe darstellt. Okay, last one. Go to Revelation 11 and verse 2. Das letzte gehen wir auch zur Offenbarung 11 und Vers 2. It says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. How long are they treading it down for? Wie lang zertreten sie sie? 1260, right? right? So you can see how all these illustrations you bring them together, they're showing this point where God's people are being stamped upon right here by this power, right? Wenn man all diese Darstellungen zusammenbringt, kann man sehen, wie Gottes Volk durch diese Macht hier zerstampft wird. Okay, so go back to Daniel 8. Gehen wir zurück zu Daniel 8. Vers 11. Vers 11. And it's speaking about the power that we just read in verse 10, right? Das spricht über die Macht, die wir von der wir gerade in Vers 10 gelesen haben. Okay, verse 10 says that this power, it says it casts some of the hosts and the stars that ground stamps upon them as pagan Rome, right? Vers 10 sagt es, dass es einige von dem Herr und den Sternen zu Boden geworfen hat und zerstampft hat. Das ist jetzt das heidnische Rom. Okay, verse 11. Vers 11. Yeah, he he magnified himself even to the prince of the hosts. So who Who is it that lifted themselves up against Christ? Wer hat sich gegen Christus erhoben? Pagan Rome, right? Das heidnische Rom. And by him the daily was taken away and the place of his sacrifice, sanctuary. Sa sorry, sanctuary was cast up, right? Well, what, who was this in history? Wer war das in der Geschichte? Constantine, right? Constantine. He's a pagan king, right? Er ist ein heidnischer König. Did he become a Christian? Ist er ein Christ geworden? No, he did not. Nein. He, he put a Christian robe upon his paganism, right? Er hat ein christliches Gewand über sein Heidentum gelegt. So therefore, what did he do right here? Was hat er also hier getan? Took away the deal. Er hat right? das Tägliche weggenommen. Right? It's just showing you the same thing repeated, right? Das zeigt einfach dasselbe, wie es sich wiederholt. Okay. So, in verse, uh, Daniel 11 and verse 24. Daniel 11, verse 24. Okay. Here we have another one of these verses. Hier right? ist ein weiterer von diesen Versen. It says, he shall, en he shall enter peaceably, right? And it's speaking about pagan Rome. So where would we place this? Right here. When they come out of one of those little holes, right? So after Greece has been judged, they come up peaceably, right? Even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. And then it says, he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches. So what's he doing here? Was macht er hier? Now he wants to stand. Yeah, now, now he's doing this, he's, this robbers, he's now stealing from the people, right? Jetzt fängt er an, um, diese Räuber zu sein, also von den Leuten zu stehlen. Okay, who, who comes up and takes a, a, a spoil and a prey? Wer kommt herauf und nimmt Beute und Raub? Yes, yeah, yeah, just, just go to um, Isaiah chapter 10. Geht zu Jesaja 10. Vers 5. Vers 5. It says, O Assyrian, The rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation 
and against the people of my wrath, people of his what? Right. That's what we read in Luke 21. There'll be distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Right? Will I give him a chance to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? What are they doing? Treading them down. Right? And they're taking the spoil and the prey. Right? Right? So when we go back to Daniel 11, it starts off peaceably here, right? And then it says, He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest place of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his fathers' fathers. He shall scatter among the prey and spoil and riches, yet he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Right, and you can look up the strongholds. Also represent uh, Jerusalem and and the places that they have made in uh, the land of Israel. Man kann es auch nachschauen, dass diese ähm, Festungen, das stellte eben Jerusalem da und die anderen Orte, die sie im Land Israels errichtet haben. Okay, so he's treading down God's people and he's coming against Jerusalem. Right? Er zertritt also Gottes Volk und kommt gegen Jerusalem. Okay, verse um, 25. Vers 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. So what do we see going on here? Was können wir sehen, was stattfindet? War between the north and the south, right? Ein Krieg zwischen Norden und Süden. With a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings, that's the north and the south, and both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Okay, so the end... Of pagan Rome is going to be at the time appointed, right? Ende von heidnischen Rom wird an der bestimmten Zeit sein. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return into his own land. And at the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or the latter, right? Because it says. At the time appointed, he's going to come to his end. Okay, so this is where he's going to get judged, the time appointed, right? Okay, we know that this is the time appointed, right? Okay, this is the time appointed, right? We just mark it parallel, this, this judgment, right? So, No, this time appointed. It's paralleling this one. But the point is here this one gets judged and then pigs. Ah okay, yes, no, I, I, okay, I get your point, right? Because the we don't have another fractal, right? So we'll just I'll just try and okay, thanks for pointing also, out. Diese bestimmte Zeit ist nicht um, dieselbe. Um, Wir haben jetzt nicht ein weiteres Fraktal hier, deswegen zeichne ich das jetzt hier drin. This would be the little time of peace. Das right? wäre die kleine Zeit des Friedens. Yes. Richtig. Okay, so if we took this, we could then draw it again down underneath here, right? Wenn wir das hier nehmen würden, könnten wir das hier drunter noch mal aufschreiben. So the time appointed here would be a parallel to this, right? Also die bestimmte Zeit hier wäre eine Parallele zu dem hier. Okay, so it says, at the time appointed, he shall return An der Zeit wird er and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the form of the ladder, for the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Das Who's the ships of Kittim? Das heißt 30, wer sind die Kittim? The, the trumpet powers. Die Posaunen, And if you just, if you were to 
this time of peace would parallel this time of peace, right? So, and right here, who comes against Babylon at the end? The trumpet powers. Okay, we're just paralleling the thought, right? Okay, it's just showing you the same point, right? The same point, right here, the trumpet powers punish the north, right? Okay, it's, and then it says, therefore shall he be grieved and return. So what does he do? He returns now, right? Um, and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, and so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So who does he have intelligence with? Mit wem hat er ähm, Bündnis? Oder mit wem hat er zu tun? Ja, who is that? It's the papacy, right? Also das ist das Papstum, was den Heiligen Bund verlässt. Okay, so it's punished here, but right here, the deadly wound is healed again, right? Bestraft hier, aber hier ist die tödliche Wunde wieder geheilt. Just exactly the same pattern as what you see here, 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 and here, right? Genau dasselbe Muster, was man hier sehen kann und auch hier. Okay, always when it, the war starts again, it's marked by this northern power, right? Um, gaining the ascendancy with the woman sitting on the top, right? Immer wenn der Krieg wieder anfängt, dann markiert es, wie diese nördliche Macht jetzt wieder an die Oberherrschaft kommt, mit der Frau an der Spitze. Okay, La last thoughts for this morning. Letzter right. Gedanke für heute Morgen. So, go to Daniel 7. Gehen wir zu Daniel 7. In Vers 8. In Vers 8. Which is marking the same point. Das markiert denselben Punkt. It says, I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, right? Ein weiteres kleines Horn. So, this dragon power that had ten horns here was a little horn, right? We read this in Daniel 8. In Daniel 8 haben wir gelesen, dass diese Drachenmacht, die diese zehn Hörner hat, ein kleines Horn war. Right? But we see that, we know that, prophetically speaking, it's the woman is sitting on this, right? Prophetisch gesprochen wissen wir aber, dass die Frau darauf sitzt. And here it says, there comes up a... Another little horn. Und hier sagt es, es kommt ein weiteres kleines Horn auf. Okay, we just read in Daniel 11 that pagan Rome, uh, uh, what does it say? It says that they, um, they have return of indignation against the Holy Covenant, they shall do, he shall even return of intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Also Daniel 11, so he enters in an alliance with the woman, that's this little horn, right? Kommt jetzt in ein Bündnis mit der Frau, das dieses kleine Horn. Okay, so what must have happened here? Was muss also hier geschehen sein? The same as what happened here and here. What must have happened? Dasselbe, was hier und hier geschehen ist. Was muss geschehen sein? The daily. The daily is taken away, das right? Das tägliche ist weggenommen. It's the whole theme of Daniel chapter 8, right? Das ist das ganze Thema von Daniel 8. Okay, so... Let's just finish reading Daniel 7, 8, and then we'll go to Daniel 8. Lesen wir noch Daniel 7, Vers 8 zu Ende, dann gehen wir zu Daniel 8. It says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Right, so here's where you see... Perfect illustration of the papacy, right? Hier siehst du eine vollkommene Darstellung des Papsttums. Right, so now go to Daniel 8 and verse 12, to the same point. Jetzt geht zu Daniel 8 und Vers 12, zum selben Punkt. It says, and an host was given him against the daily, by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced, and it prospered. So there was an army given to take away the daily, right? Also eine Armee gegeben, um das tägliche wegzunehmen. And if we go to Daniel 11, verse 31, Wenn zu Daniel 11, Vers 31 gehen, it says, an arms shall stand on his part. There's the same army, right? Das ist dieselbe Armee. And they shall pollute the sanctuary strength and shall take away the daily and they shall place the abomination that maketh 
desolate. So what do they do? Verse 20. Take away the daily. Right? Take away the daily. Okay, the last verse. Let's the verse. Daniel 11.35 Daniel 11, Vers 35 And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. Right? Noch für eine bestimmte Zeit. So here you have the time appointed hier hat man die bestimmte Zeit. and right at the end here again you have the um, Time appointed, where he gets punished. Right? Okay, so you can see this. You can just pull it down. It shows the exact same pattern again, right? You can einfach zeigen wie das hier, wenn man das runterlegt, dann genau dasselbe Muster noch mal ist. Right? It's easy to follow. It's it's. Bible is explaining itself over and over, right? It's einfach zu folgen. Die Bibel erklärt sich immer und immer wieder selbst. So you can see that these, uh, um, this little horn and this little horn, they're just two times an illustration of the same power, the northern power, right? Man kann also sehen, dieses kleine Horn und dieses kleine Horn ist zweimal eine Darstellung derselben Macht, nämlich dem nördlichen Macht. But it's just the time of trouble is getting greater as it as it goes down. Right? Die Zeit der Trübsal wird immer größer, je weiter es vorangeht. Okay. Now there's much, we, many layers we still have to put on there. There's many things going on in here that we still haven't fully grasped. Das right? sind viele Lagen, die wir noch darüber legen müssen, müssen und viele Dinge, die drinnen stattfinden, die wir noch anschauen müssen. Okay. So much we've got to still comprehend. But ever, did everybody follow Daniel? You just use the other stories and it explains itself, right? Das ist viel, was wir noch verstehen müssen, aber konnte jeder Daniel 8 folgen, also wenn man diese verschiedenen äh, Darstellungen nimmt und das erklärt sich selbst. Okay, so you, you have to, to draw these different fractals out and go through this for yourself, placing it on to think, okay, now I, I understand why that's there. I understand what this is saying, right? Also, ihr müsst diese verschiedenen Fraktale und Darstellungen aufzeichnen und ähm, für euch durchgehen und, und sagen, ah, jetzt verstehe ich, warum das da ist und warum das da ist. Okay, so on tomorrow morning we will just continue, we will just uh, add some thoughts to this. Und morgen früh werden wir einfach da weiter fortfahren und noch Gedanken da hinzufügen. Okay, let's close with... Dear Father in Heaven, uh, Lord, we thank you that we can go through these illustrations again. Herr, wir danken dir, dass wir wieder durch diese Darstellung durchgehen können. And that you give us more light and understanding now also on Daniel 11. Dass uns jetzt auch noch mehr Licht und Verständnis über Daniel 11 gegeben hast. And Father, we praise you for every ray of light on these topics. Und Vater, wir preisen dich für jeden Lichtstrahl auf diese Themen. And we ask to please uh, Unseal the book of Daniel for us. Wir bitten dich, dass du uns das Buch Daniel entsiegelst. And that we can uh, receive this revelation. Dass wir diese Offenbarung erhalten können. And that we, like Daniel, understand the setting up of kings and taking down of kings. Und dass wir, so wie Daniel, das Aufrichten und Absetzen der Könige verstehen können. And that we understand the war between the north and the south. Dass wir den Krieg zwischen Nord und Süd verstehen können. That we would understand the things that go on before our very eyes in this world. Dass wir die Dinge verstehen können, die vor unseren Augen in dieser Welt stattfinden. And then have complete confidence that you're in control of every aspect. Und dass wir vollständige Zuversicht haben können, dass du in jedem Aspekt Kontrolle hast. Lord, we ask you to please therefore open our eyes. 
Deswegen bitten wir dich, Herr, dass du unsere Augen öffnest. That you would forgive us all our unbelief. Dass du uns all unseren Unglauben vergibst. And that you would help us to really become established in your truth. Dass du uns wirklich hilfst, in deiner Wahrheit etabliert zu werden. And understand spiritual things. Und dass wir geistliche Dinge verstehen können. So we thank you, Father, for all your goodness. Und wir danken dir, Vater, für all deine Güte. And ask for your blessings on this day. Und bitten um deinen Segen an diesem Tag. In Jesus' name. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.